Here at Intuit, the Center for Intuitive and Outsider Art, we have this piece by Judith Scott in our exhibition, Trauma and Loss, Reflection and Hope. We are going to explore this piece further and learn about how Judith Scott began her art-making journey. Judith Scott was a fiber sculptor, so she was known for using threads, material that makes up our clothing and blankets. The first thing we see is that this piece has a very unique shape and the shape is wrapped in fabric. The first color that we notice right away is blue, but there are so many other colorful threads. Some colors are warm and light. Some are cold and dark. Because it is a sculpture, we can walk around this entire piece and look at it from different angles. Notice these different shapes or forms as we move around. Imagine holding this piece. Do you think it's heavy or light? Imagine what it was like to wrap a work of this size. Think of all these threads and how they feel together. Some are tightly close together and others lie loosely. What do you think the texture is like? It may feel bumpy and soft. You may have thought this artwork looks like a bird, a nest or cocoon, or maybe even a sheep. Judith Scott was known for hiding away objects inside of her sculptures, such as keys, plastic tubes, and bicycle wheels. Some of her sculptures were very large, while others were small. She became interested in using fabric, as we see here, when she joined the Creative Growth Art Center in California at 43 years old. The center gave people with disabilities the tools, space, and support to create artwork. She enjoyed gathering the materials the center had on offer and experimenting with different combinations of colors and textures. While teachers guided Judith Scott early on, she made her own artistic choices. Another thing we may notice about this piece and Judith Scott's other artwork is that she shows some parts and hides away others. It may seem like she is trying to change these materials. The way some parts are hidden makes us pay attention to certain areas more. Our eyes are drawn to this tag that says cinnamon because it is hanging rather than wrapped. We are not sure what the shape of the sculpture represents, but we can imagine what it may be from its shape and details like this tag. Judith Scott did not leave us any notes or make any sketches about what her work was about. By looking closely at her artwork, we can interpret what she was sharing with us through her art making. Judith Scott was born with a condition called Down Syndrome. She was also not able to speak and was deaf. This led her to be institutionalized as a young girl and for most of her life, which means she was put in these places known as special schools. People with disabilities stayed in these places for a long time because other people believed those with disabilities were not able to take care of themselves. These institutions were not always kind to people with disabilities. They were also small and did not have any playgrounds or colorful rooms. They believed that Judith Scott was not able to learn anything, but this is not true. Thankfully, with better support and knowledge to help people with disabilities today, they have more opportunities to go to school, to work, to make friends, and enjoy things like everyone else, just as Judith Scott enjoyed making pieces like we see here. We do not know why Judith Scott wrapped her objects this way, but we can understand that she was expressing herself in her artwork. Her artwork is how she continues to communicate with us. For more about Judith Scott, check out a new book titled Unbound, The Life and Art of Judith Scott, written by her sister, Joyce Scott. I hope you enjoyed this time together, and thank you.